Hey everyone, it's Natalie, also known as Nitty Natty, and this is the Sweetheart Sock. This pattern is coming out February 1st, and the yarn in this kit is by Moon Glow Yarn Company. You can grab it right now. So I'm gonna share with you in this video my top three tips for knitting color work. It applies to this sock or any color work that you're gonna be doing. Let's get started. The very first tip I have for you is to go up a needle size when you're knitting color work. For example, when I normally knit socks, I use a US one needle. My favorite are the Chaigu Red Lace. So when I am knitting this color work sock, I'm using my US one anywhere I'm doing stockinette or regular not stranded knitting. So for the ribbing on the cuff, the heel, and the entire foot. But when I knit the color work, I went up to a size two needle. I've got my other one in progress here. So a larger needle size. Some of my testers have even gone up one additional size from their original needle size. So whenever you're doing color work, especially if you're making something like a sweater, which I have the Lume sweater here, I did the same thing. I knit everything but the color work in on a size like seven or something like that, I can't remember. And then for the color work, I went up to an eight. The reason for that and why it's pretty standard across most knitters is because when you're knitting color work, you have this extra layer of everything where you're pulling the yarn across the back. And for most people that tends to make them a little bit tighter when they're knitting color work. It doesn't apply to everyone. So if you're making something really big, like a sweater, it's always best to swatch in both your stockinette stitch and your color work, block them and measure before you start a project. My second tip for you is to keep your floats really nice and stretched. I'm about to go to my desk to show you exactly what I mean on this, but let's talk about needles for a second here again. So we've already said go up a needle size, but the other thing that affects your color work can be the style or type of needle that you choose. A lot of people like to use circular needles as in like completely in the round, not magic loop, not double pointed needles, not two circular needles. They like to do that when they're knitting color work because it makes it easy to always be able to stretch your floats, which is when you strand you pull the yarn across stitches that you have not knit in that color. It helps to be able to do that for the entire sock. When you do something like Magic Loop, which is my preferred method, you're going to be, um, you're going to get a little stuck here in the corners, as I like to call them, whenever you go across a needle on either side. This happens with double points too. You're going to approach or be approached with a little bit of an issue um, with carrying your yarn across those. But don't worry, I'm gonna show you exactly how I like to do it. So without further ado, let's take it to the table and I'm gonna show you a little tutorial of how I like to float my yarn. Whenever you're knitting color work, it's really important to keep your floats nice and loose. You don't want them too loose, but you definitely don't want them tight. The floats are just those strands that go across the back of your stitches. So as you work one color, when you go to work the second color again, that second color is going to go across the other color and so on. So in this row here, what I'm about to be working is three stitches in a row in this nice minty green color and then one of the white stitches. And I like to do two-handed color work. There are many different methods. So I will hold my main color in my right hand and knit English style, which is how I will knit when I'm using a single color. And then I'll hold my contrast color in my left hand and knit continental style. This is not the only way to knit color work. You can hold both yarns in your right hand, both yarns in your left hand. Um, you probably just want to avoid having to do any method where you have to pick up and drop um, your color every time you switch colors. So there's just many different methods. So in all the methods, you're still going to keep your 
floats nice and loose. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my three greens. I'm only carrying across one stitch here. So I don't really have to do much. I just make sure that I don't yank my stitches tight. You shouldn't be yanking your stitches when you're knitting anyway. And I just knit three, three stitches, boom, 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 all in a row. Now here's where it gets a little bit trickier. Now I need to make a white stitch, but I've got my white yarn all the way over here, three stitches back. When I carry across these three stitches, I need to make sure that I keep that nice and loose. The way that I like to do this is I'll go into my next stitch and then I will take this yarn and carefully, gently, I've got these three stitches spread out, I will knit that stitch. And I really don't pull any tighter. You can see how it goes across those three stitches. It's not like oversized or anything, but it's definitely not tight. If I were to pull my white yarn, it pulls everything too tight. This too tight, this looks good. So I'm gonna spread those stitches out again to fix that. <laughs> okay, so let's see it a little bit in a faster motion. So I've got three stitches in a row. Then as I go into my white stitch here, I'm gonna spread those three stitches out. Could be three, two, five, four, whatever it is, and knit, and I've kept that float nice and loose. It works the same way if we were floating the opposite color, like if I was floating this green, I would just make sure that as it goes across, I keep things nice and loose. One trick for this that works really, really nicely with double pointed needles and nine inch circulars, but does not seem to work for magic loop is you can actually take your entire sock, whatever you're working on and flip it inside out. So I'm going to just start to push the cuff of the sock through here so that my knitting is inside out. And now, as I'm knitting, my floats are going to be on the outside instead of the inside. And what this does is it can just kind of help you slightly to give yourself a little more space as you go across when your floats are coming off the outside of whatever you're making. It doesn't work as well in Magic Loop, at least it doesn't for me because I can't find a comfortable way to hold my yarn, but for circular needles and double pointed needles, this can work really nicely. Now you might be wondering, what do I do in Magic Loop when I have to carry a color across needles? So this can happen at any, I like to think of them as corners. I know they're not corners, but at any like interchange here between needles. For instance, here I'm going to have one stitch in white and then my next stitch is going to be in green. However, the last time that I knit the green was way back here. So I've got four stitches on the cord in the back. One stitch here, a total of five stitches to carry across here. What will happen if I just grab that and knit that stitch and carry on is that I will have a really tight situation here across the two needles. That actually turned out pretty loose. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give myself credit and say that practice has given me <laughs> that skill, but the first time that I ever knit, actually that's probably not enough. The first time that I ever was knitting color work on Magic Loop, I was really having this issue where I would pull um, only enough to give like this first white stitch a little bit of room and then it would be way too tight, right? You can see how that would be tight. So here is how to work around those corners. And this will happen on double pointed needles too. Let me take this stitch back out. All right, no matter how many stitches that you're carrying across, Hopefully it's not more than five or so, because that's a lot. I've got five here. Again, I've got four white stitches here in the back and one white stitch that I've just knitted here on the front. You have to make sure you give space for each of those five stitches, just like they were on your needle. So what I like to do is I will just go ahead and 
knit my stitch in the new color, and then I will kind of transfer ownership, holding of the needles to my left hand, because I wanna take a look at this corner here. And what I'm gonna do is I am going to stretch these stitches out so that they all line up as if they were on the needle tip. And I will let, see that one stitch there we just knit? I will let this strand of yarn open and stretch. And then as I go back to knit my next stitch, I will keep that tension. So as I knit the second stitch in that color, that will anchor it, and then I'm gonna double check again and just make sure, did I give enough space? See how that float is nice and long now? And it spans across the five white stitches that I have. Four here, this one's just my working yarn, four here and one there. This is a game changer for double pointed needles and for magic loop, and it will make your corners or transfers between uh, stitches between needles so much looser. My last tip for you is that you must block your color work. If you don't block anything else, please block your color work. And what I mean by that is at least take it submerge it in water for at least 20 minutes, soak too because, hey, who doesn't eat while they're knitting <laughs> or doing something else? I mean, I drag my yarn around with me everywhere. Just the other day, I dropped it on the floor in a public place. So anyway, soak your knitting, not just steam block it, but let's actually get it submerged in water because all these strands that are behind your stitches are, even when you're like ni nice and loose, they still need to relax and open up. This is an unblocked color work sock. It doesn't look too bad, um, but it will definitely look a lot better when I wet block it. If you're brand new to color work and this is one of, the, one of your first times doing color work, it actually makes your color work look way better. So if you're a little bit disappointed by how things are looking, one, keep practicing because you will definitely get better, but two, block it. And you're gonna be surprised at how effective that that is. I hope these three tips help you improve your color work knitting. Again, these socks are coming out February 1st, 2022. The yarn is already out and I will have both linked down below along with the sweater project that I showed.